with the importance, understanding the importance of a woman's, well, we say woman, but it's really for anybody, for everybody, the importance of a woman's image. Uh, just kind of dealing with image consciousness tonight. Uh, somebody said, I have a poor self-image at age, I think it was either 50 or 60. And this is a reality, but let's, let's deal with it tonight. Uh, the importance of a woman's, or in, in the queenology sense, the importance of a queen's uh, image. Because when we, you know, I don't know about you, or what part of the country, whatever part of the country you're from, but where I'm from, New Orleans and Houston, I can go to Walmart right now and I can find uh, women in there in pajamas right now. I can go there right now and I can see women walking through Walmart with pajamas on and uh, the big furry slippers. I can go and find that right now. I can see women pulling up to their children's school with curlers in their head, robes on and house slippers on, going in to yell at the teacher. I can find that right now. Because, I don't know, there's something about, I suppose, um, when the when the self-esteem bank is drained that a person fails to connect the dots between who they really are at their core and what they're projecting to the world now sometimes when you go in walmart and you see people in there with slippers on and mickey mouse pajamas on unfortunately sometimes that really is who they are but other times, you, you're just looking at a person that's either not been taught or you're looking at a person that is uh, severely depressed or you're looking at a person that has just been conditioned by her environment. But the purpose of establishing um, an image, you know, is to point the world in the preferred direction pertaining to their perceptions or imaginations, that's a good word, of who you are, what you're all about, and what your value is. Um, you, you have the responsibility. In the father-daughter talk, we, we, we say that your dress code is your personal commercial. Whatever you promote, whatever you advertise to the world is what they are going to conclude, assume, buy into. If you have a for sale sign on the front of your house uh, for deer meat and people knock at your door and they ask you for deer meat, uh, you can't get angry with the people because that was your advertisement. And you have to understand that your image is your advertisement. Your image is, is your advertisement. Your image is your, watch this, the, it is the power you possess to control to control the world's first impression or imagination about who you are. Now, why we can't use this in the positive, I don't understand because the enemy uses it in the negative all the time. The enemy comes in as a hypocrite and he paints a false image. Whereas, you know, many of us, we have, we have such value in our core but we spend so little time on our image that the world, um, it's like having a business that's open and all of the lights are off. Did I say that right? It's like having a business that is open for business and you're in there, but all of the lights are off and the world passes you by constantly because the impression that you're casting to the world is that we're not open, we're not here. And could that be true of your image? Uh, First Samuel 16 and seven, the Lord reveals to us there. He says, man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. And you know, what do we say as Christians? Well, you know, the Lord knows my heart, but people don't, people do not, people do not. The world does not know your heart. The world does not know what's on the inside of you. So if man is looking on the outward appearance, there she is there, Chris Cole style, hit on her thing now and uh, follow her. If the world is looking on the external parts of you, 
what is the message that you're sending? Now, let me, let me clarify this. Let me just clarify this really quickly. Your image extends. Hey, Chris, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. Hope you got that phone thing straight. Your image extends beyond your look. See, because there are a lot of you that think your image ends with red bottoms and MAC makeup. And that is not true. Your image, your image extends far beyond just your look. Your image entails your attitude, and it also entails your language. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's no uh, worse looking woman than a beautiful woman on the outside who has a horrible attitude. Have you ever seen a woman that's beautiful on the outside, got all of the Saks Fifth Avenue stuff and the Louboutin, the this or the that or whatever else y'all wear, and she's ugly on the inside? Nothing more horrible looking than that. Uh, let's see. So your image extends beyond your look. It entails your attitude and your language, the way you speak, the way you carry yourself, as well as the way you present yourself. See, a lot of times we go overboard uh, and we spend more money than we have to spend on an external look because we've not really made any real deposit into the spiritual and the soul of ourselves. Uh, Proverbs 31, 22 through 26, there you find uh, the virtuous woman, the woman we talk about all the time. Listen to how it describes her. It says she makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. It's intentional. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and sells it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Watch this. Strength and honor are her clothing. So we've gone from the external of the woman to the internals of the woman. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. So we've gone from her speech to her attitude to her look. There are many of you who have concluded that your image is all about your look and your attitude is horrible. You, 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 you know, just turn on the housewives show and watch these people just you know, dressed up in all these wonderful clothes, beautiful looking women, and just cussing and cursing and fighting like horrible image, horrible, 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 horrible image, horrible image. So there are a few things I want to just, just drop really quickly, and then I'll get out of the way, and then I'm certain that um, you all have a lot of questions and what have you, but number one, a woman's image, and again, this is not just limited to a woman, we're just kind of making this a queenology focus tonight. A woman's image reflects a perspective to the world concerning how she sees herself. A woman's image reflects a perspective to the world concerning how she sees herself. Do you not know that there are many occasions where we may be disrespected or not recognized or ignored because we are not projecting an image that truly reflects who we are, our qualities? We, we are misrepresenting ourselves in terms of the way we present ourselves to the world, okay? I use this one all the time when I'm teaching the father-daughter talk. Uh, it doesn't matter how many nice things you've heard about me. If you, if you turn this thing on tonight, and this is your first time watching me, and if I had, on, had gold rings on every finger and a part down the side of my hair and big glasses with diamonds all the way around them and, you know, a, a purple velvet jacket and you know, black glasses at nighttime and a velvet hat with a feather sticking out of it and all of that kind of stuff and talk like, yeah, you know, you would not be here very long because I would be, I would be reflecting a perspective to you that would misrepresent the content of my character. 
So now let me ask you a question. Does your image, okay, in, in the workplace, does your image really reflect the value that you bring to the company? In, in society, does your image really reflect the kind of woman you are? Or are you, are you overloaded on the education, overloaded on the building of the career, overloaded on the church aspect, and just kind of laid down on your image? You, you got the cure to AIDS on the shelf, Cure to AIDS on the shelf, but you wrap, you're wrapping it in a brown paper bag, and you're wondering why nobody's buying it. Your image reflects a perspective to the world concerning how you see yourself in the world. Watch this. The world treats us in accordance with the way the world perceives we view ourselves. Romans 14, 16 says, let not your, then your good be evil spoken of. Don't, don't mean good and have good and package it improperly. Uh, number two, okay, this is for those of you ladies that are waiting on your king, waiting on your Boaz. My nephew Mark Moore says Boaz is dead, but I disagree with him. <laughs> number two, a certain kind of man is drawn to a certain image. Are you praying for a man that you don't look like? Are you praying for a man that you don't, don't even look like? Are you, are you praying for a profile that you don't even match? Are you praying for a king and you are queen but you look like a beggar? A certain kind of man is drawn to a certain kind of image. The first thing a man, is, well, you see, I don't, I don't want no man that's just going to uh, be attracted to me for my looks. Well, you know, a, man, a dude, come on now, 99 times out of 100, a dude is not going to be attracted to your spirit or your brains. He's going to be attracted to your image, the way you look. And then if he's a mature man, he, be, he, he progresses to get to know what's in your head and he progresses to get to know what's in your spirit. But if you, if you don't even have the packaging, don't complain that you don't have the customers. And I'm not telling you to go out here and spend ridiculous amounts of money that you do not possess. It doesn't take a whole lot for you to iron, press your clothes, uh, sit down before you leave out the house and make certain that your stuff is matching and that it, it fits you. It, it's, it's not too small, not too big, uh, that you are coordinated. You can go to Walmart and come back looking good if you, if you have some intentionality about it. See, you can't. You, a certain kind of man is drawn to a certain kind of woman. Uh, a king, uh, you know, well, 2 Corinthians 6.14 talks about we should not be unequally yoked. Why would you not match the profile of the kind of man you say you want to attract? I don't get it. You come into me telling me, Pastor, I'm praying for, I'm waiting for my king. I'm waiting for my king, and I'm looking at your head. You haven't even washed your hair. You don't need six figures to wash your head. I'm looking at your nails. All your nails. I'm a man, and my nails look better than some of y'all's. All your nails cracked up. You got... Your polish just peeling back. Oh, you haven't even done your feet. And you, you tell me about you, you waiting for a king. If he show up, he ain't going to recognize you. If he show up, he's not going to recognize you. Because you got, what you got going on right now is false advertisement. First thing I saw when I saw my wife wasn't her spirit. I, 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 didn't, I didn't see nothing about no intellect. I saw a woman that I liked. I said, that, that, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I got to know the woman. You know, if you're a food addict like me, and I'm, I'm being delivered, Sabrina might be on here, so I got to make certain I say that. You go to the store looking for snacks. If you're a food addict like I am, you go to the store searching for new snacks that you've never had before. And you know what you look for? You look for a certain name brand and packaging, colors, the, the artwork, and it draws you to it. The imagery draws you to it because the imagery puts 
watch this, an imagination in your head about what it must taste like because look at how it's packaged. Well, likewise, you know, you have to make certain that you have an image that will attract the kind of man that you make certain that your image matches the profile that you're praying for. You know, like, okay, well, okay, let me, let me not say that because I'm make some of y'all mad if I say that, so I ain't gonna say it. Uh, number three, a woman's image opens or closes professional doors and or opportunities. Um, you can be the most brilliant woman uh, in the workplace, but if you're going to the job, if you're going to corporate America and you're dressing like you're going to the club, number one, you're probably not going to have your job long. Number two, uh, you're probably not going to be promoted even though you are the smartest in the room based on your image. Your image is closing or opening doors, okay? And, and watch this. I'm keeping it real. I'm keeping it real. I don't care what Pastor Blake said. I'm keeping it real. And you are really, really broke. Now, I'm hood. I'm hood. I was born in the hood. I still got the hood in me. I like flashy stuff. I got enough jewelry that I can load up all my fingers and all around my neck. I'd have so much stuff shining in this camera right now that, you know, y'all wouldn't even be able to see me. But every now and then I might wear some of that stuff because I understand completely that my image will open or close doors. When I'm going into a situation where I'm dealing with people that are on another level, I'm not going in there with the hood R.C. Blakes. See, the hood R.C. Blakes is known as Bobby. I know that's new, that's new information for a lot of y'all. I know you know me from the hood days when you run up on me and call me Bobby. What's up, Bobby? Don't tell nobody nothing. I'm a new man now. I'm an evolved man. So I have to use my image to open doors. See, when I walk into a room, I, I want people, I don't even, okay, let me help y'all out here. I don't even want to dress like a preacher. The problem with most preachers is that preachers dress like pimps. Those that are not enlightened yet. I'm trying to teach them. You can't come up in no church or in no room with no red gaiters on and a suit with 50 different buttons on it and five different colors and think you're going, you're going to garner the respect of governors and mayors and senators and congressmen. You got, you, got, you got to learn to put your black suit on, your blue suit on, with your white shirt. You, 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 you put your, your plain white square there, and drop a nice tie on it, and call it a day. Don't go in there with ten different rings on. Put your wedding band on, put a nice watch on, call it a day. They're going to say, ooh, who is that guy over there? Who's he? What, what does he do? Whenever folk ask you, what do you do, you're either making a strong positive impression or you, you are making a joke of an impression. <laughs> Whenever they ask you, what do you do? You know that you are hitting the mark one at one point or the other. So now watch this. A woman's image opens or closes professional doors and opportunity. Now remember I told you that your image consists of and I'm just about done now. More than your look, it entails your attitude and your language. When Abraham sent his servant out to find a wife for the young prince Isaac, the servant goes and he has his camels and this young girl named Rebecca runs up and serves him, serves the camels and is kind to him and is beautiful. And the servant said, man, has God blessed me this quick with the wife? It was, it was, it was her image that opened the door Come on now. A woman's image opens or closes professional doors and or opportunities. Your image, number four, this is a big one. Your image makes you feel a certain way. Your image makes you feel a certain way. You know what I love? You know what I love? I love to see uh, plus size girls that have beautiful attitudes and take the time to put themselves together 
and you can look on their countenance and you can tell that they they're not just acting they really believe and know that they are all of that your image makes you feel a certain way and when you feel a certain way you project onto the world the way you feel about yourself which does what makes the world respond to you according to the energy that you're putting off so if 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 you know you're wondering why you're staying in depression you haven't combed your hair take a shower wash your face put some makeup on put yourself together look at yourself in the mirror and be able to say babe i'm proud of what i look like today y'all y'all too busy looking at uh well size and all of that Don't, let me tell you something every size on the scale is desirable to somebody the man that you praying for wants you exactly like you are you ain't got to try to get on, be on a treadmill trying to lose weight trying to be like somebody else you saw you can't lose that kind of weight your, your, your grandma got them hips your mama got them all your sisters got them and your cousins got them you ain't gonna get rid of them hips but you know what you can do take what you have and make certain that you package that, that you present that to the world at the highest level. And when you step out of your house and you feel good about the way you look, it creates an energy in you that will attract like kind to you. Number five, your image establishes boundaries. Your image establishes boundaries. Again, your image, talk, we're dealing with the way you look your attitude and your language. All of this stuff establishes boundaries. A woman, you can drop a woman with the right image, right personality, right language, right attitude, right dress code. You can drop her in a building full of men and her image will establish boundaries that none of those men will cross. If they try to cross it, her image, uh, the, the thing that she's projecting to the world will make them know quickly that this is not the one. And she don't have she doesn't have to be snooty. She doesn't have to be loud. She doesn't have to be aggressive or bitter. But her image says. Uh, your image should always be forward. In other words, watch this. Don't dress for where you are. Don't carry yourself for where you are. Dress and carry yourself for where you're going. What do you mean by that? He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. What's the wisdom of the text? You have to be a wife to be found. You don't become a wife after you're found. So if you have to be a wife, you ought to look like a wife. Wives... <laughs> You have to have the image that represents your future. Where are you going? I say to young men all the time, they come in and say, Pastor, I'm, 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 well, I ask them, what are you going to be? I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be this. I'm going to be that. I say, okay, well, now lawyers do not walk around with their drawers showing. Lawyers have belts. And they pull their pants up. And they look at me. And say, yeah, yeah, lawyers don't walk around with their drawers out there. That, that, lawyers don't do that. Contempt of court. The judge will throw you out of the courtroom if you walked in there dressed like you dress now. So I get their mind. I say, now what does a lawyer, how does a lawyer look? I say, oh, you know, a lawyer kind of dressed like, um, dressed a little bit like you. I say, so you're saying lawyer wears suits and stuff? Yeah. Think you about ready to try a suit? Yeah, I think I'll try a suit. Come on, let me bring my go get your suit. I I, 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 I condition their minds to establish the image according to where they are going, not where they are. Certainly not where you've been. <laughs>